हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कंटिन्यू रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद भागवतम कैंटो फोर चैप्टर फोर्टीन टेक्स्ट एटीन जनेश्रम जनेश्रमानी by their particular occupations does anyone remember where we are right now what, what what is the story happening right now does anyone remember uh, king, it's about king vena right he's yeah, the descendant the, uh, of uh, yeah who is very cruel yeah and so the sages are trying to Tell him, you know what his duty is supposed to be. Right. The state's duty and the citizen's duty are very nicely explained in this verse. The activities of the government head or king, as well as the activities of the citizens, should be so directed that ultimately everyone engages in devotional service to the supreme personality of Godhead. That's what Bhagavatam tells us: that live peacefully in this life. at the same time cultivate spiritual knowledge so at the end of life we can go back home back to godhead the king or government head is supposed to be the representative of the supreme personality of godhead and is therefore supposed to see that things go on nicely and that the citizens are situated in the scientific social order comprised of four varnas and four ashramas the varna and ashram society is the original vedic society it is established by krishna himself krishna says in bhagavad gita varna sharma vibhaga sah guna i'm sorry guna karma vibhaga sah and he divided this society based on guna and karma based on our uh, nature and work in the vishnu puran it is stated that unless people are educated or situated in the scientific social order comprised of four varnas brahmana kshatriya vaishya and shudra and four ashramas brahmacharya grahast vanaprast and sanyas so society can never be considered real human society nor can it make any advancement towards the ultimate goal of human life it is the duty of the government to see that things go on in terms of varna and ashram as stated here in bhagwan yagya purusha the supreme personality of god at krishna is the yagya purush the yagya purush is krishna himself as stated in bhagavad gita 529 bhuktaram yagya tapasam krishna is the ultimate purpose of all sacrifice Prabhupad used to call this verse the peace formula. By understanding this verse, we can become peaceful. Understanding Krishna's position, understanding our position. We are thinking we are the uh, ultimate purpose of all sacrifice. That the purpose of sacrifice is that I should be happy. Yes, but how can we be happy when we connect ourselves to Krishna? Krishna is the ultimate purpose of sacrifice. He is the enjoyer of all sacrifices. Therefore, he is known as Yagya Purusha. The word Yagya Purush indicates Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna or any personality of Godhead in the category of Vishnu Tattva. So, Lord Krishna and his incarnations or his expansions that are Vishnu Tattva can be called Yagya Purush. 
Krishna has uh, some incarnations of Krishna called Shakta Veshavata. They are they may not be Vishnu Tattva. They may be in the Jiva Tattva. They are empowered by Krishna. But Vishnu Tattva is Krishna's personal expansions. In perfect human society, people are situated in the orders of Varna and Ashram and are engaged in worshipping Lord Vishnu by their respective activities. Uh, so here, very important. By our activities, we worship the Supreme Lord. Arjuna wanted to give up doing his duty in Bhagavad Gita. He didn't want to fight. Krishna said, no, you fight. You do your duty. But do it for my satisfaction. So this was the purpose of the Varna Sharma society, that everybody does their duty for the satisfaction of Krishna. And what happens with that? So that we don't get um, entangled in the laws of karma. We don't get entangled in the action and reaction. So then we don't create further lives for ourselves. Every citizen engaged in an occupation renders service by the resultant actions of his activities. That is the perfection of life. So working for the pleasure of Krishna, as stated in Bhagavad Gita 1846, Yata pravritir bhuta nam yena sarvam idam tatam svakarmanatam abhyarchya siddhim vindati manavaha. By worship of the Lord, who is the source of all beings, and who is all-pervading, man can, in the performance of his own duty, attain perfection. Prabhupada would say, if we don't remember Krishna while doing our duty, then how can we expect to remember him when we are leaving the body? Something to think about. So, And Krishna also keeps saying in the Bhagavad Gita to Arjun, you do your duty, you do your duty, but do it for this Krishna satisfaction. And in this way, one can attain perfection. Thus, the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Shudras, and Vaishyas must execute their prescribed duties, as these duties are stated in the Shastras. In this way, everyone can satisfy the Supreme Personality of God and Vishnu. The king or government head has to see that the citizens are thus engaged. In other words, the state or the government must not deviate from its duty by declaring that the state is a secular, secular one, which has no interest in whether or not the people advance in Varna Sharma Dharma. So Prabhupada is saying that if one is a leader or a government head, then they need to take up the responsibility of making sure that the citizens are progressing also in their spiritual life. Today, people engaged in government service and people who rule over the citizens have no respect for the Varna Sharma Dharma. They complacently feel that the state is secular. In such a government, no one can be happy. People must follow the Varna Sharma Dharma and the king must see that they are following it nicely. So because we are going to act based on our guna and karma, the modes will make us act. Arjuna wanted to renounce the world. He was saying, I'm going to go live by begging. Krishna told them, see, now you're having the opportunity to fight. So it's better you fight because it's your duty. And by your modes, you're going to fight. By your nature, you're going to fight, you know. Now you're refusing to fight, but your nature will force you to act. So you better do it now and do it for my pleasure. Surrender the results to me. And in this way, you will not be implicated. Similarly, Lord Chaitanya, when the Brahmana of uh, South India wanted to renounce prematurely his family, Lord Chaitanya told him, no, you go back home. You be where you are. You take care of your family. You do your duties. At the same time, you chant Hare Krishna. And wherever you go and whoever you meet, you talk to them about Krishna. So that is um, Lord Chaitanya's Instruction to us, chant Hare Krishna. Tasya Rajno Mahabhaga. Tasya Rajno Mahabhaga. Bhagavan, 
भगवान भूता भावन भगवान भगवान परितुष्यति विश्वात्मा परितुष्यति विश्वात्मा तिष्ठतो निज शासने तिष्ठतो निज शासने O noble one, if the king says that the supreme personality of Godhead, the original cause of the cosmic manifestation, and the super soul within everyone is worshipped, the Lord will be satisfied. So here the sages are pointing out the position of the supreme Lord. They are pointing out the position of God that who who has caused this cosmic manifestation? Who is the creator? Anyone? Krishna. Yes, thank you. And he's also the. What is within everyone? He's also the super soul. Yeah, that's right. So the sages are pointing out to us also the position of Krishna. You know, we we may wonder who created this universe. How did it come out? Who created the material world, the material energy? We can learn from Bhagavad. Krishna. Oh, who's the Paramatma? Who's, who's this Paramatma? It's Krishna. It is a fact that the government's duty is to see that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is satisfied by the activities of the people as well as by the activities of the government. There is no possibility of happiness if the government or citizen, citizenry have no idea of Bhagwan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the original cause of the cosmic manifestation, or if they have no knowledge of Bhuta Bhavana, who is Vishvatma, or the super soul, the soul of everyone's soul. The conclusion is that without engaging in devotional service, neither the citizens nor the government can be happy in any way. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that this um, Rajavidya Rajagurya. Pavitram idam uttamam. This, this knowledge is most confidential and it is susukham karta abhyayam. It is susukham. It's very joyful, the process of devotional service. It's not a process which, uh, a process of suffering. In fact, it is a, a process of enlivening the heart because it is food for the soul. So that's where the bliss comes from. The soul feels happy when it's engaged in devotional service. The conclusion is that without engaging in devotional service, neither the citizens nor the government can be happy in any way. You see, we are trying to find happiness. We are looking like crazy for happiness, like the moth who goes after the, the fire, the heat. We are, we are trying to find happiness here in the material world. Sure, there is happiness in the material world. Of course there is. That's why we are still here. But it is temporary. It's flickering. That's why we feel dissatisfied. Because sometimes there's happiness, sometimes there's sadness. But what are we actually looking for is eternal happiness. We want to be always happy. And the only way that can happen is when we connect ourselves to Krishna. Because we are unable to connect ourselves to Krishna, we feel dissatisfied, feel unhappy. But if we are able to connect ourselves with Krishna, we can be happy always. Because Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure. It's from him that all happiness comes. You know, like when we are thirsty, if we get one, two drops of water, I mean, sure, it helps because you're really parched, but still keeps us longing for more and more. But if we can go to like a fountain of water and drink as much as we want, that's how it is with Krishna. He's the reservoir of all pleasure. At the present moment, neither the king nor the governing body is interested in saying that the people are engaged in the devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Rather, they are more interested in advancing the machinery of sense gratification. Consequently, they are becoming more and more implicated in the complex machinery of the stringent laws of nature. People should be freed from the entanglement of the three modes of material nature and the only process 
by which this is possible is surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we may say, oh, but we are in the modern civilization. We cannot live without our laptops or mobiles. You know, we can't do without that. That's okay. It's all right. We, we utilize those things. But at the same time, we cultivate Krishna consciousness. At the same time, hear and chant, hear and chant. Hmm? We don't have to go into the agenda that, oh, no, 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 I don't want any more modern civilization. No, we don't need to do all that. We just need to continue to hear and chant. And this is surrender to the Supreme Lord. This is advised in Bhagavad Gita. Because Lord Chaitanya, he came, he was like, chant. He was telling everyone, Hari, Hari, chant, Hari, Hari. And this is how he was giving love of God to everyone. So by following the process, we are surrendering unto the Supreme Lord. And this is what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Surrender unto me and I will protect you from all sinful reactions. Unfortunately, neither the government nor the people in general have any idea of this. They are simply interested in sense gratification and in being happy in this life. The word Nija Sar Shasane <clears throat> in his own governmental duty indicates that both the government and the citizens are responsible for the execution of Varna Sharma Dharma. Once the populace is situated in the Varna Sharma Dharma, there is every possibility of real life and prosperity both in this world and in the next. So being situated in the Varna Sharma Dharma, in the society, uh, acting according to our nature, according to our work, being peaceful uh, in this life and at the same time, cultivating Krishna consciousness so we can go back home, back to Godhead. Thus, mims tushte kim aprapyam. Thus, aprapyam. Jagatam Ishwareshwari. Jagatam Ishwareshwari. Ishwara Ishwari. Loka sapala hi etasmai. Loka sapala hi etasmai. Sapala hi etasmai. Aranti balim adritaha. Aranti balim adritaha. Aranti balim adhata. Personality of Godhead is worshipped by the great demigods who are controllers of universal affairs. When he is satisfied, nothing is impossible to achieve. For this reason, all the demigods, presiding deities of different planets, as well as the inhabitants of their planets, take great pleasure in offering all kinds of paraphernalia for his worship. The sages now are also telling the king that even the demigods are worshipping the Supreme Lord. Even the demigods worship Krishna. They, the demigods, they are powerful personalities. They are controlling this universe. Imagine the wind god. You know, he's deciding how the wind is going to blow, where the wind is going to go. And then the sun god is, is rising and he's setting. Or the moon god. You know, so these are really, really powerful personalities. But who are they worshipping? They're worshipping Krishna. They're worshipping Krishna. And by worshipping Krishna, nothing is impossible to achieve. All our desires can be fulfilled when we approach Krishna. Because Krishna is unlimited. Unlimited. He, he, anything is possible for Krishna. Everything is possible for Krishna. All Vedic civilization is summarized in this verse. All living entities, either on this planet or on other planets, have to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead by their respective duties. So one may say, why I have to satisfy Krishna? I want to satisfy myself. Why should I satisfy Krishna? But what happens is when we are doing for our own satisfaction, that's why we are creating our own karma. We are being bound by more and more karmic reactions. And then we are creating further and further lives for us on this planet. 
when he is satisfied, all necessities of life are automatically supplied. In the Vedas, it is also stated, Eko Bahunam Yogadadati Kama Katapanisha 2 to 13. Eko Bahunam Yogadadati Kama. So, who is the one who's supplying everything? That is the Supreme Lord. Kathapanishad is stating that. That we are all eternal. Nityo Nityanam, Chetanas Chetananam. We are all eternal souls. But out of these many, many eternals, there is one eternal who's taking care of all the other eternals. And that person who's taking care of everyone, that person is God. From the Vedas, we understand that he's supplying everyone's necessities. And we can actually see that the lower animals, the birds and the beasts have no business or profession, yet are not dying for want of food. So we may think, you know, the sun is rising today because I want the sun to rise. Or it's raining today because I want the rain. But if we analyze up there, it's not in our control. So who's providing the necessities? If we, if we want to even create a seed, we are not able to. In the laboratory, you know, we try to manufacture a seed. We can't. We have done so much progress, scientists. We have done so much progress. But we are unable to even produce one seed. So who is creating the seeds? That's Krishna. He's providing for us. This is all the Vedas are saying that. It's not that we are, any, we are just saying it out of nowhere. But all the authorities, all the Vedas are saying that. We can see even the, and who's taking care of the birds and the animals. They don't go to work. They don't study. No, but they still have their food. They get their shelter somehow. They're living. They are all living in nature's way and they all have the necessities of life provided, namely eating, sleeping, mating and defending. Human society, however, has artificially created a type of civilization which makes one forgetful. Forgetful of what? Of his relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And this is what we need to remember. This human life is given to us for this purpose because we have forgotten our relationship with God. And in this human form of life, we can revive our relationship. We are unable to do that in other forms of life. But in this human form, it's easy to revive this relationship. Modern society even enables one to forget the Supreme Personality of Godhead's grace and mercy. Consequently, modern civilized man is always unhappy and in need of things. People do not know that the ultimate goal of life is to approach Lord Vishnu and satisfy him. They have taken this materialistic way of life as everything and have become captivated by materialistic activities. Yeah, you, we, we have forgotten. We have forgotten Krishna. We have forgotten our relationship with Krishna and we are, you know, so dazzled by whatever is happening around us. We are so enamored by this material nature. We are, like cap we are captivated by this material nature. Completely forgotten our real life as the spirit soul in relationship with Krishna. Completely forgotten. Indeed, their leaders are always encouraging them to follow this path. And the general populace, being ignorant of the laws of God, are following their blind leaders down the path of unhappiness. In order to rectify this world situation, all people should be trained in Krishna consciousness and act in accordance with the Varna Sharma system. The state should also see that the people are engaged in satisfying the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the primary duty of the state. The Krishna consciousness movement was started to convince the general populace to adopt the best process by which to satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thus solve all problems. So all the Shastras, they state that in this age of Kali, 
we can easily revive our relationship with Krishna. We can easily gain perfection by Harinam Sankirtan. Harinam 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 Eva Kevalam Kalam Naste Eva Naste Eva Naste Gatir Anyatha. In this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, the only way of God realization, self realization is to chant the holy name. There is no other way. There is no other way. There is no other way. And Lord Chaitanya, he came himself to give us this chanting of the holy name. And his divine appearance is coming up soon. 6th March in some part of the world, 7th March in other part of the world. Are there any questions or comments? So, like, I was just wondering that though the sages knew that how cruel Vena is, like, but still they were trying to remind him of his duties. And so that means that that time uh, the sages played a very, very important role in the king's life. Yes, that's right. Yes. That's right. They would always take guidance from the sages, the, the righteous kings. That's why they were called Rajrishis. And we can see the sages are not inimical towards Vena. They are not like, you know, oh, you're so bad, so you yeah. are. They are giving him a chance to reform himself. So that's why the sages are called. They are magnanimous. They are open-hearted. Yeah, like what they what what is written in the Veda, they are preaching the same thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not immediately condemning him that you're so bad. This they're yeah. telling him to do the good you well. Know. Yes. Yes. Something we can learn. No? Very good point that you're bringing up. We can learn that. Because they're trying to connect to God. Yeah. Like because they, they know that, you know, there is the Paramatma inside him also and doesn't matter. So they're trying to connect him also to God somehow. Yeah. Wow. Yes. And making him at least realize, do your duty, do your duty well, you know, take care of the citizens. Mm. Mm. Well, that's what they're doing. Very nice. So, that's a good point. Very good point. So, shall we stop here for today? Okay. Hare Krishna, thank you so much for listening and joining in. Hare Bo.